Listen, here's the thing. Your kid can't read. Your kid can't read. Are you on Kids Can't Read TikTok? Because I sure am. Don't give a baby an iPad. This has been the worst semester in terms of students' ability to get work in on time. I've never seen anything like it. And I've been teaching at the university level for over a decade. Students are not doing well, y'all. They're not okay on multiple levels. Oh, whoa, that's so crazy. Why would I say that? Oh, well, maybe it's because you're lazy. Well, as a high school teacher, I'm here to inform you that high school kids are doing way worse. As a music teacher, I didn't really think I had a whole lot to add to this conversation. I run a before and after school program and the majority of the kids in my room are in grade three. And I've known some of them since they were in grade one. So I've been with them for a couple of years now and legit some of them can't read they're not at the grade three reading level they are reading six years below grade level the only difference is a whole heap of these kids are going to graduate at the end of this school year i don't think a lot of y'all understand how much this is affecting them in every single course that they're taking and on top of your kid not being able to read your kid doesn't have an imagination and we are expecting them to go to college and obtain jobs when they cannot even comprehend basic skills your kid doesn't have free thought. Did I hurt the millennials' feelings? I'm so sorry. TikTok says the kids can't read, so it must be true. But in all seriousness, it does seem like people are worried about Gen Alpha. Gen Z and Gen Alpha, since they're both the ones that are currently in school, junior high, middle school, early school. That's primary school. What? <laughs> I'm smart, but I'm real dumb. <laughs> But you know me and what we do over here because it's not so easy to just say the kids can't read because what does that even mean? The kids literally cannot read, which according to some of y'all, yes. And then on top of that, if the kids can't read, why is that the case? Why is this becoming a problem? But we're gonna talk about all of that and more and unpack my speculations and observations as to why the babies might not be okay. Kids today got a lot to be concerned about. So we're gonna talk about all of that. But first, bonjour nakam, hi. Welcome slash welcome back to my channel. My name is Khadija. If you're new, feel free to take a look around, suss out the vibe. I just sit in my living room and I talk about whatever I want. And today we're talking about Gen Z and Alpha and all this panic over their literacy and general competence. That's it. <laughs> if you would like to support the channel with some money, with some ducats, with some coins, join my Patreon. If you don't wanna to commit to something like that, you can also get some merch for the holiday season. Although I think if you order now, it might be a little too late to come for the holidays, but you can get it in January. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first claim, kids can't read. So a TikToker named Ali Rooker posted this video. There are a bunch of other TikToks with teachers talking about this as well and a bunch of other complaints that we'll get to in a moment. I also spoke to one of my friends who is an early childhood educator and has been for eight years and her voice notes are sprinkled throughout this because she had a lot to say. They can't read, they can't spell, there's not a lot of emotional regulation happening, there's not good coping skills happening. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Also check out her YouTube page, Books the House Down. We love a reading girly. You have some teachers anecdotally speaking about the fact that their students literally can't say what certain letters come after other letters. A lot of these kids would not even use alphabet symbols. They would be making up symbols. They would not even know how to write A, B, C, D, E, F, G on their piece of paper. They wouldn't know how to form those letters. Literally can't do the alphabet. Again, anecdotal. There are even teacher Reddit boards with stuff like this the tweets, et cetera, et cetera. But let's take a peek, because what exactly is going on here with these actual literacy rates? Well, Raina found, for one speculation, that teachers are being more incentivized to pass students that aren't ready to be passed. There was one case Raina found at William Cullen Bryant High School in Queens where that was the case. Teachers feeling pressured into giving students who weren't prepared that extra nudge just because they're getting pressure from the higher ups to pass these students. Because if your school is failing, people are gonna look at you like, so what's going on girl? None of the students are passing. So what do you do? Pass everybody and then it's like you get to the ninth grade and you're like the catcher in the who? That's not a very good marker of that. And they be banning books and shit now too. So like you get to the ninth grade and you don't even know who Toni Morrison is. Uh, that's, 
<laughs> no wonder the children are not all right. I'm kidding. In Canada, the literacy rate for children has declined 29% in the last decade. Kelly Lamrock, a child youth advocate speaking to CBC, talked about how it's also the fact that we as a society, at least in Canada, don't really focus on literacy. So that could also be contributing to lower literacy rates. He also noted that new Canadian families, if you're immigrating to Canada, you might not be speaking English and French at home. My dad spoke English to us at home, but my mom always spoke well of to us. So we definitely knew English, grew up speaking it, all of that. I would say it's my first language, but a lot of other families, that might not be the case. So if you're not getting as much of that practice, let's say at home, and then you're being expected to keep up with people who've been speaking English their whole lives at school, that could also be a factor for lower literacy rates. Lamrock said, there has been an increase in the number of children with diagnosed learning exceptionalities from 27% in 2018 to 2019, to 34% this year. We have the speculation that students are being passed before they are ready, and that is leading to more teachers being concerned about their literacy rates the higher up you go. You have maybe the addition of immigration and not necessarily speaking the language that is the dominant language of the school that you're going to and not getting that practice outside of school, especially at home. But going back to what I think is one of the biggest factors for a lot of this, the Miss Rona of it all. I and many other folks speculate that because students were stuck learning at home, their schooling was constantly being disrupted, and then you were sending them back to school in the middle of a pandemic, students were getting sick, teachers were getting sick, and there is currently evidence that Miss Rona can have an impact on something called the cytokine storm, which is an exaggerated inflammatory immune response that has flu-like symptoms. Now, because Miss Rona is still new to the party, she just got here, they're still doing research on this and the long-term effects of Miss Rona anyway. But something like the cytokine storm, this exaggerated inflammatory response, can have long-term effects, can leave the body dysregulated for months or even years. Still being researched, but that is something to definitely consider when it comes to kids and students, not just because the panorama was around and disrupting their learning, but also how many kids have contracted, you know, have hung out with Miss Rona because the regulations were so willy-nilly and all over the place, and still are, if we're being honest. Another factor that I was speculating and found a bit of evidence in is that a lot of teachers are leaving their jobs. In an Education Weekly article in the US, approximately one third of teachers say that they'll likely be in a new job within two years. Teachers have to deal with a lot, from oversized classrooms to lower pay, from a lack of support in your school system, from a lack of support of being able to discipline students in an appropriate way, a lack of funding for mental health programs in schools, even though we're all talking about how mental health is, is just deteriorating for so many of the youth. There's also a sort of perceived lack of respect from the public. It's like, we appreciate teachers, but like, well, you knew what it was when you signed up. You know, teachers don't get paid that much. You know, they're underappreciated, undervalued, so. Sucks to suck. No, we do that and we could undo that. Students and their mental health impacting their own learning and then therefore how the teacher is able to teach not just that student, but the rest of the class. And in Canada as well, it does vary about shortages between provinces. Quebec lacked something like, quote, 1,859 full-time teachers and 6,699 part-time, coming to a total of 8,558 teachers missing. In Saskatchewan, apparently the problem is so bad that random people are being pulled to the front of classrooms that don't even have teaching certificates to teach students. In Saskatchewan, the province's Teachers Federation says they're seeing a significant number of uncertified teachers coming into schools. President Samantha Bacotti said that these teachers who often have no bachelor of education degree and may only be out of high school for four years are being put in front of the classroom. Now, when I first decided to talk about this, I was immediately going to the internet. I was like, it's Miss Rona and the internet's fault. It's the iPad, it's technology, it's Mark Zuckerberg. I see you mother According to NPR, at least as of 2019, kids up to age 11, half of them have 
smartphones. There is evidence to show that too much screen time does have a negative effect on the cognition of a young child. There was a study in the Journal of Adolescent Health that tracked children nine to 10 years old and their screen time. And this is what they found. Summarized from NBC. The study on OCD was published in the Journal of Adolescent Health and tracked more than 9,200 children for two years, starting at ages nine to 10. Researchers logged how much time the kids spent on devices and found that 4.4% qualified for a new OCD diagnosis. The odds of developing the disorder over the study period increased by 15% for every hour a kid played video games and by 11% for every hour that they watched videos according to the findings. Social media wasn't necessarily attributed to these findings. It was more so about screen time because usually kids that age, nine, 10, their parents aren't letting them on Instagram. And though, again, this is still something that is unfolding, that is still being researched, so I'm not gonna sit up here and say, they're absolutely right. For every hour you spend online, you're gonna have OCD. I know a study wouldn't be so audacious to say that blatantly. Adding my own conjecture to all of this, <laughs> this whole video, I wonder what it's like when so many of us have access to screens and these worlds where it's catered to us, we decide what happens, we decide what we see, what we don't see, how it looks, there's a bit more control. What does that then cause us to see the real world as when those things aren't in place, when it's not glossy, when it's also just not catered to us, you know, the whole main character thing of it all. And that's maybe more social media than just online screens, the internet. But I wonder truly what it would have been like to have been raised touching an iPad screen and swiping. Another thing the teachers are complaining about is not just the literacy rates, but also the behavior of the students. Y'all's kids are bad. And this gentle parenting thing might be the reason. I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. Well. And I think there's a lot of fawning that I'm noticing as like a trauma response with parents where if a kid doesn't necessarily like get their way or if they're upset, like their response to the kids being like acting the way they are is just to like give in to be like, okay, okay, it's fine. Like here, get the thing that you want instead of, you know, talking it through with them. Yeah, there's a lot of factors, but it, it is bad. The idea is that millennials experienced, and I think this is a certain kind of millennial, but anyway, millennials experienced the overparenting, overbearingness of boomers and Gen X parents. And we're like, I'm not gonna do that. You know, millennials were about healing trauma, breaking cycles. We're not gonna be like our parents. Maybe they were just super tough on you. A lot of our parents beat our asses, you know, like we were abused, okay? It's okay to say that, it's okay, it's okay. A lot of us were abused. You know, it's natural that we want to swing that pendulum in the other direction for a lot of us. Cause it's like, no, no more of this. I am not going. Mm. However, if you want to try to remove all, <laughs> now we try to <laughs> equate abuse to adversity and children need adversity. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> the idea that your child can never hear the word no, or that you have to be so gentle with them that they are not ever dealing with anything difficult or hard or never challenged or anything is not gonna make for a human that is able to exist in the world amidst other people and adapt to their environments. Because again, the main character syndrome of it all, your child is not just your child. Your child is gonna interact with the world. And any of us that are tasked with the responsibility and the great care of raising another human being have to keep that in mind, have to be considerate of that. Yes, I am raising you, you are in this house, I care about you, I care about your feelings, we have discussions. I'm not just gonna tell you how things are and, and be authoritative and, and my way or the highway, like your opinion matters, you are a human being, you are autonomous, yes. And you are part of the, <laughs> you are part of the whole. You're part of the whole! <laughs> but you are. And so for you to walk around acting like you're the only person on this earth that matters, that has dealt with stuff, I'm looking like I'm talking to an actual kid. For you to walk around, no, that's not what we do here. So it's this balancing act and you could do all the right things and still mess up. You could do all of this. You could be doing all of this and your child could still be going to school and acting an ass on these teachers. Not talking when they supposed to, but talking when they not. Listen, having children, I don't think it could be me. Now, even though we can talk to the parents and say, hey girl, y'all need to sort some things out. We have to acknowledge that maybe a reason the kids are not doing okay is because the parents aren't doing okay. Parents are burnt out and they need some compassion, just like the teachers do as well. And the students, we all do because <laughs> we're just this world.
this world. But for so much of recent history in this part of the world, the idea has been you have your family and they are the unit. And the family is the most important mafia style, man. You don't go against the family, okay? Even if it's traumatic, even if they're your biggest bullies, even if the love is a toxic, toxic red flag relationship, codependency, enmeshment, nonsense, children of emotionally immature parents, the body always keeps the score, shame, shame, shame spiral. That's my family. But what happens with that is that you isolate the parents and the children from other support systems. I had three parents growing up, my mom, my dad, and my mom's sister. So that's always just been what I'm used to, having uncles and aunts always in the house. You go live with people for a little bit, like you're not just raised by your parents. And that has its benefits and its downfalls. I'm not gonna act like it was perfect. But parents even just needing relationships with other adults that aren't just other parents as well, they can be, but are other people having a community around them so that it, it doesn't just feel like it's just them and their kids. We're not living in a time period where there's a nuclear family and one parent works and the other stays home. And that's the most popular choice for most people. Like a lot of people do it, but it's not necessarily the most popular choice for everyone. More people have to work because the inequality gap, and also you have to have a certain level of wealth to be able to do that in general. The inequality gap is growing. And so many of us do not have the luxury of living in a household where only one parent has to work. So you're working, you're coming home, you're taking care of kids, you're doing your grocery shopping, you gotta do laundry, you gotta clean this house, maybe you have pets, maybe you're supposed to see people, you're supposed to do extra work outside of work. There's so many things that go into parenting that <laughs> truly, like y'all, I'm not playing when I say I don't wanna be a parent. The fact that my mom would cook for all of us on the weekends and be working two or three jobs, huh? They struggled so that I could, <laughs> called my cats their grandchildren. <laughs> Love y'all. Miss Rona had an effect on parents and guardians as well. Yes, the teachers are burnt out and tired and exhausted and have been for a while. And y'all's kids are the main reason, not the only reason, but one of the main ones. And your kids are suffering and dealing with a lot of shit and you are as well. It's all connected, baby. Getting more broad as we always have to do. Uh, another reason the kids might not be all right and why it might be affecting everything, including their ability to concentrate and therefore actually literally be able to read. I don't know, Schmidt I was nine years old on September 11th. I remember that day so well. I was living in Georgia. I remember not being allowed to go outside to recess. I remember coming home and literally seeing people jumping out of buildings and nobody was explaining to me what was happening. And it was just like, I, I don't even know that I could process that as an 11 year old. It wasn't until some 20 something years later that I started going on the longest deep dives, watching as many documentaries as I could, just trying to understand it. I say all this to say, children are more aware of things than we think. The minute we reach consciousness as kids, it. it it's over, we become aware and we're just like, oh no, take me back, oh, please. Trying to shield your child from the world's realities is not going to stop the world's realities from affecting them, from touching them, from them experiencing it. Because you're raising your child, but so is the world. It makes sense that the kids are, are seeing literal schmenischmeid and being affected by it. Maybe they've been hearing since they were born that the planet is literally on fire and is not gonna be here much longer. And we're all talking about it and kind of doing stuff, but like the big players that really could be doing more just aren't. Everyone is diagnosed with something, but nobody can get the access to the mental health that they need to treat those things, but they're expected to just go on like everything is fine. Like, it, it, the, it, <laughs> People from many different generations have experienced the world at its quote unquote worst, right? There have been plenty of times in history where the world has been like, man, I don't think it could get much worse than this. The only difference is that we have technology and the internet and that somehow makes the stakes feel even more intense, 
even more dystopian, even more freaky and weird. I truly cannot imagine what it must be like being a child growing up trying to comprehend this world around you. It feels like adults can barely comprehend it. I think it's important to be aware of children's literacy rates going down and how to combat that because an uneducated society an illiterate society, one that cannot access information and learn and educate themselves and be able to therefore think for themselves. One that's easy to manipulate and control. Parents are burnt out, retired. Teachers are burnt out and tired. Everyone is exhausted. It's trickling down to the children and then the children aren't getting their needs met. I worry about the children, but I worry about the children for the same reason I worry about all of us. But then I also think children are quite resilient. People now more than ever are starting to shift and change and that's why things feel so unstable and unsettled. That's why things feel so messy. As exciting as it is to live in times where things are shifting so much, it's also scary. It's also dysregulating. It also might mean that people are gonna have to learn from our mistakes. It will mean that, it'll always mean that, but people will have to learn from the mistakes that we're making currently future people, people that are distant from us in time, as Todd May says. What did we do and what didn't we do when it came to the children, not just literally not being able to read, but dealing with all the extra external factors that burrow in internally, mental health issues, environmental issues, social justice issues, all of these things that they're becoming more and more and more aware of. And maybe in families with parents who are doing their best, but perhaps don't have the range to be able to help them with this because they're trying to understand for themselves, you know? It's a tense, tense time for a lot of things, a lot of tension. From that, always can only hope that we learn and become better. And maybe again, in my lifetime, I won't see the, the efforts. Maybe we're just the learning people, the people that the future people learn from and go, okay, so we don't do this, this, and this. Got it. Or hopefully we start to turn things around. I think having these discussions is a good first step because if you're not even aware that there's a problem, how can you start to fix it? We shouldn't be giving children complexes about their literacy because it's hard enough not being able to read and then feeling ashamed of it. And so more of us could do better about having compassion and approaching these things from that place instead of just assuming it's the parents' fault or the teachers don't do enough or our education system sucks or capitalism is just the reason for everything and everything just sucks. It's like, okay, what is that gonna do? What about the kids can't read? What's going on? No, not the, the babies can't, uh-uh. That's not a good sign. All right, roll up our sleeves. What do we need to do? It's difficult to admit a quote unquote weakness or a vulnerability, not just within ourselves, but within our society. Cause the children not being able to read or not being able to emotionally regulate or having difficulties, cognitive difficulties, mental health issues. It's a reflection of what, what we're not doing well as a society. And it's easy to point the finger at every other thing instead of stopping and going, but what can we do instead of just blaming? Now, what can we all come together and do about it? And that part I'm gonna have to leave early childhood educators, parents and experts, youth activists, advocates that study this sort of thing. Cause I'm just a bitch talking online. But anyway, let me know what y'all think. As always, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. As always, be sure to feed your plants, water your plants, and remember that you can always change your mind because you can. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Alpha. Say, oh, say, darling, what do you do for those pearls? What? <laughs> if you would like to join the, I got my product placement. So I'm gonna put my montage of things and then I'll do the bleep thing. If you would like to support, <laughs> I love this. But for real, it does seem like, if you would like to support, I don't like this thing being here. Okay, that's a shitty thing about lip gloss. Why can't I say that word? shopplaceflaunt.com. Monetarily? It doesn't sound like a word anymore. And then I'll put the intro here. If you would like to support the channel with some money, where are we starting with? They all say, darling, what do you do for those pearls? What? <laughs> I am a good girl.